First of all, I am so much pleased, pleased to see our moderator, Mr. Ravinder Singh. I have known him for the past, uh, I think, three, two or three months now. But the first time was the last time we met. So this is the second time we met again. And I'm so happy, Mr. Ravinder Singh, and especially you being a moderator here, emboldens me to stand in front of you, the crowd. Thank you so much. And I am Mr. Pao Zahub Guite, and I'm from, which I don't want to say, but I'm compelled to say from the state of Manipur. So I'm representing the cookie communities, especially those cookie students communities within this Delhi and NCR. So I would like to take this as an opportunity to show and to make my people, my gangs to stand up in their own seats and do some uh, salutation gestures. Please kindly stand up my people. Yeah. Yeah, we about uh, 10 people can participate in this discussion. Please remain stand. Please remain stand for a while. I just want to do something else. Okay. Taking this as an opportunity, I want to do a salutation gesture to our trial patriots, namely Bhagat Singh, Raj Guru, Sukhdev. Please put your hands this way and look at those three pictures. Okay, thank you. Please be seated. That's a salutation gesture which we can do in a tribute to these fallen martyrs of ours. Coming to my presentation, I put my topic this way. So my topic goes this way, structural and systemic injustices to the Kuki Adivasis of Manipur. It will be more of a text over, uh, over text reading. First of all, I want to present historical aspects of the Kukis who have always been accused of illegal immigrants. So I just want to rebut these narratives or allegations from certain sections of the community of the state for which I just don't want to identify myself with from the state where I am exactly from. So in second part I have to mention about the two different administrative entities if I'm not mistaken which has never happened across the country it's only in Manipur where we have two different administrative entities as hill and valley even in uh, Lok Sabha parliamentary constituencies we have two seats they are better called as inner Manipur and outer Manipur logic says something this will be hard later on and I want to stress some points regarding the British legacies and in the fourth point, I just want to stress on how cookies are being or have been alienated so far. And on different fronts like economy, social, educational, political, etc. And I want to put out some major atrocities on this cookie adivasis and this ongoing ethnic conflict. And I want to stress on 10 months of central rule under Article 355. We would like to question this Article 355. 355. Why not 356? Why not President's rule? With this 355, someone is taking advantage of Article 355 and doing something else, which is unconstitutional at all. 
the following points i will as i said i will stress on the unconstitutional maitai kanglai pak government kanglai pak means the maitai version of manipur kanglai pak so there is a parallel government there are about six or seven terrorist outfit who have been secessionist since 1960s and they have been fighting for their independent country like kanglai pak actually they want to secede from what we call india that is bharat and last point i want to stress on the academic cleansing campaign first of all it was ethnic cleansing campaign which is rightly mentioned here it's better to use genocide i think genocide is more relevant than ethnic cleansing campaign because your identity can be cleansed provided you surrender your identity if i am a guki if i want to be a maite then my ethnicity will be cleansed but genocide means you have to be rubbed away at all no blood of guki at all in in, in manipur that's what genocide means and after that i will come to the main points of our forum here it's very impressive name of the forum here it says forum against corporatization and militarization i just want to discuss on these two particular top, uh, points corporatization and militarization okay historical aspects of the cookies historically the tribes of manipur primarily the nagas and the cookies have always been different from mites or maites of 700 square valley in the state so there have been many historical accounts uh, recovered from different libraries proving our indigeneity and the latest uh, could be said in a fight against the british the british raj which we go today as this what a raj corporation raj so we fought a number of events against the british and three major influential expeditions or better like that we fought against the british are the lushai hills expedition of 1871 1872 this time the people of mizoram which we call mizors were known as lushais and lushais were one of the clans of historical nomenclature called kuki kuki is and will be always an umbrella term for the people of like mizors and other kuki clans of manipur and mizo and bangladesh and anywhere we have always been under this umbrella temple kukis so by this time it was lusai hills expedition of 1871 72 the chini hills expedition of 1818 1889 and the chin lusai hills expedition of 1889 to 1890 and the latest being anglo kuki war 1917 1919 british uh, recorded it as anglo sorry kuki rebellion but with the rise of uh, academicians in the community of kukis historiography gains ground with this study of historiography as um, academic historian we have enough historians who constructs and who reconstructs our history from nationalist perspective and put it as anglo kuki war so there's nothing to be questioned at all the british might have put it anglo rebellion kuki rebellion or whatever but this is about academic things this is about historiography which impeccable historians are writing about it so now coming to historically different administrative entities as i said before even before 
British conquered Manipur in 1891. They have never been together. So after the British conquered Manipur in 1891, it divided the region of Manipur into two types. One is hilly regions, one is valley regions. So through political agents of the British, like HL, Chief Commissioner of Assam looked after the hilly at hill administrative matters and the uh, Darbar, Manipur Darbar looked after the valley administrative matters under the leadership of the Maharaja of Manipur. So, following this trend, we must aware that recently the Union Home Minister of the country Amit Shah said to the Chief Minister of Manipur that you should look after the affairs of valley and I have to look after the affairs of the hilly regions that means the cookie dominated areas because so far the cookie the naga areas are not affected so as i said in terms of electoral politics also it's been divided into two geographical entities like outer manipur inner manipur outer manipur can be con uh, elected only uh, tribals and Inner Manipur is an uh, unresolved one. So, logic says that there must be something behind this division from the point of uh, historical reconstruction. So, there must be something. So, we can not stay anymore longer with the government of Manipur or with the people of Manipur. Better we remain good neighbors under certain administrative forms could be union territory with a legislature or could be a full-fledged statehood so as a legacy of the british manipur became a part c state and the manipur state hill people's administration regulation 1947 was eventually replaced with Manipur Village Authority in Hill Areas Act 1956. The Act also provided for the formation of a committee called the Hill Standing Committee with jurisdiction over matters concerning the hills. Manipur's attainment of statehood in January 1971 led to changes in the administration of the hills. To deal with these changes in administration of the hills, Special uh, problems that could arise due to administrative charges. So, the Union Government inserted Article 371C under which we have a provision called Hill Area Committee. This committee is constituted under Article 371C of the Constitution and the members of HSC will look after the, the entire administrative affairs of the state but this cannot be implemented till now right from 1971 it's not been implemented there have been enough instances of demand where we laid our lives enough blood have been set for the demand for the implementation of this hill areas committee but until now it's not been implemented another act is the Manipur Land Revenue and Land Reforms Act of 1960. This is implemented only again within the valley areas and one provision of which is that the Maites cannot purchase land in the hill areas. So the leaders, the CSOs have been making or pushing for the removal of or applying the same law to the hill areas as well okay coming i have to shorten my speech so how cookies are being affected let's see in terms of economy let's see the imbalances in manipur state budget for four years the total budget for four years is 21,900 crores, out of which 
the hill areas got only 419 crore rupees that means only 2.05 crores and the maites got 21,481 crores see the imbalances see the difference they have occupied 97.94 of the budget and the tribals 2.05 that too divided between nagas and cookies okay see even the niti ayok 2021 supported the economic issues of this state and coming to social discriminations the matters since time immemorial have been using head speech like how to how punk how cookie too which can be loosely translated as fuck you tribal fools uncivilized fuck you cookie etc these are the social stick matter that they have been meted against the cookies all throughout the centuries and in terms of political we have 60 seats out of which 40 belongs to the maites and 20 to the tribals 10 10 each to the cookies and nagas there has been enough imbalances in the uh, political constituencies of the state and about the ongoing kuki adivasis like 6523 FIRs have been uh, filed but nothing has been taken up until now this is called selective justice and the central government imposed emergency under rule article 35 in the state of Manipur for 10 months now this has increased the gravity of ethnic cleansing against Kuki Adivasis even more grievous. This helped in backing their secessionist militants such as UNLF, KYKL, Pre Park, Maiti Lipun, Arambai Tangol. I think you must have heard of Arambai Tangol, which is very infamous militia group of the CM of the state, I should say. Okay, this one. Okay, please. Now coming to the academic cleansing. After ethnic cleansing, now academic cleansing. Hugis have been deprived both in university and in job opportunities. Their documents have been burnt. Their laptops have been burnt. Now they are stuck in their journey towards their education. Now what would they do? And now those who have, who have ever finished or done with their graduation, they are being again deprived in the job opportunities the most instant the recent most instance of which is ssc conducted result it was declared on 15 march and 178 cookies were selected and only two or three cook mates were selected as a result of which uh, the state government intervened and the ssc fall prey to this pressure and the revised result came up after five days and 50 cookies lost their recruitment so as i said the name of the forum that we have is much impressive to me so i would prefer to have my following speech essentially based on it so for the sake of putting out a better presentation or argumentation i would like to substitute the two terms corporatization and milit militarization with a single term called loot l o o t loot otherwise known as plunder now it becomes easier for me to make my points very clear see a loot can be further seen in two ways as corporate loot arms loot the Kuki Adivasis have been severely affected by these two infamous loots. And now coming, I want to elaborate on these two forms of loots. One is coming to corporate loots. Manipur is one of the eight ethnic states of India, geopolitically called India's Northeast. The state government paved the way so as to take corporate barons along so that they can walk away with a capitalist benefit from the rich natural resources in the state 
see the business standard which is business oriented english daily published on 16 may 2017 a surreptitious deal or deed that was signed on 15th november 2010 between the state government and the new zealand based oil exploration company called jubilant oil and gas private limited jogpl the deal was signed in total absence of prior knowledge and acknowledgement from the indigenous adivasis like the Gukis of Churachampu district or Lamka and Nagas of Tamenglong district and Pali Maites of Jiriban district. The total area granted for oil exploration was 3850 square kilometers and the estimated quantity of oil or natural resources that Manipur has is approximately 5000 billion cubic feet of oil. So they have made two justifications with regards to this. One is the exploration project will be useful and bring in quite a lot of opportunities for the development of both the state and nation as a whole. And the second justification is there would be a surge in the employment sector paving the way for Manipur's economic prosperity. These are two justifications which the state government has made. So. Uh, going next, the production sharing contract for the Manipur Oil Block 1, this is Block 1, okay, was signed on 30 June 2010 and the petroleum exploration license was granted by the Manipur government on 23rd September 2010 and the contract for Oil Block 2 was signed on 19 July 2010 and the license was granted on 20 September 2010. One minute only please. Now, coming to arms loot, another loot. Arms loot is what the famous, uh, the forum put as militarization. The forum has put it militarization, but we call it loot, arms loot. The pattern of militarization by the state government over tribal or Adivasi's land of Manipur has subtle differences from those of tribals or Adivasi's from the states like Chhattisgarh, Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra, etc. In the case of Manipur, militarization can be better understood as Talibanization. It's like a Talibanization process. Some critical analysts put that the arms from state police armories were handed over, even not looted. It's been handed over. That means someone handed over. Who's that person? You must be knowing it. None other than the state CM. So about 6,000 arms and over 5 lakh rounds of ammunition were looted from different police stations and the police training center at Bangui. So I want to stress two scenes of Talibanization or militarization. One is in Imphal Valley where militias that I mentioned like Arambai Tengol, Mete Lipun and other banned organizations working scot-free under the nose of state police commandos and even central uh, security forces or of allegiance conducted by Arambai Tengal is very unconstitutional. So, there is a demand for the re-imposition of AFSPA so that this militia could be rubbed away from the valley. So, another scene where militarization happens is More. More is a small town but it is a very strategic point. It is the primary conduit of Act East policy. So this is a transborder town and the gateway to East Asia and Manipur police commando are stationed there alongside the central security forces and in the guise of central security forces maintain police commando meted out several inhuman atrocities on the local people of the border town. So this is the militarization. So for the conclusion part I want to put three points only which are very simple. One is Today, as we are gathered here, we should take a pledge to hang to death those social evils such as discriminations, atrocities and what not against Adivasis. And number two, North, South, East, West, we Adivasis are one and equally affected by the policy injustices of governance. We cannot be devoid by neoliberal capitalist development approach of government or governance. Thank you. Thank you so much.
Thank you.